Hi, uh, Kevin McDonald here, and uh, today I'm with Tanya King Muhammad, who has been um, doing a lot of great stuff in property over the last um, few months and few years. So what I thought I'd do is I've had chat with, have a chat with Tanya and talk a little bit about her journey, and hopefully it can add some value to you and give you some ideas about how you could maybe start or scale your property business. So Tanya, thank you for joining me. Really appreciate having you online and taking the time out. So um. Just for, for everyone who's listening in, Tanya, can you tell them a little bit about you and just your sort of background before Progressive, before property, and um, what you were doing, what life was like for Tanya before property? Uh, and we start there, and then we'll go into the property journey afterwards. Okay. So, um, hi, everyone. Thanks, Kevin, for having me. Um, so, up until just over two years, I was um, a doctor. I was working in medicine full-time. Um, almost at the end of my training to become a consultant, which I've now done. Um, and I had done one property course before, but it never really got me anywhere. Um, and I was kind of completely oblivious to investing, um, buying assets, um, business, mindset, self-development. I had no idea, no insight whatsoever. I was literally just coasting in a career which just stressed me out and just didn't make me happy. Um, and completely oblivious to everything that I do and that I use on a daily basis now and that I teach other people to use and do as well these days. Um, like, I don't recognise the same, that person looking back two, two and a half years ago compared that to the person what, now. So that, that was just like two, two and a half years ago? Yeah. Okay, and did you own your own home then? Uh, I did own my own home right. um, or well, we just sold our first home I think I think right. we just sold our first home after we had our first baby um, but I had no idea about investing when I bought my first home um, yeah. but we subsequently bought a number of properties um, but I can go into that following your following yeah. your cue whenever you want to talk yeah. about that. So you owned your own home you didn't have any investment experience no business experience just working long hours I guess as a doctor. Yeah, so, very long hours. So missing out made... on life, basically. Yes, yeah, yeah. But helping I, I, life in terms of helping patients and things, of course. I was in a corporate job, which is like not like a doctor job, but it was still long hours. So I know how you kind of felt. Um, I did that for fourteen years before getting into property. So yeah, okay. it can be it can be long hours. Um, then what made you think? Obviously, you're in you're working as a doctor, and you're thinking I need to do something. What made you choose property? What and I guess what was that first stage then when you decided I'm going to I'm going to look at property and see what I could do with the property? Um, so we wanted to find a, a solution for me working in a job which just didn't really suit me. It didn't kind of it didn't align with my highest values of family, friends and health come first kind of thing, because I was missing out on Christmases, on birthdays. Um, and that just doesn't align with what is important to me. Um, I was also doing long night shifts and that kind of thing. So it, again, didn't align with health coming first as one of my highest priorities and my highest values. So we had to find a solution to replace my medical salary relatively quickly because I'd come to the realisation that I couldn't keep bashing my head against the brick wall doing something that was just wasn't meant for me. And I, I, I've always felt like I was meant for more and meant to do other things and bigger things and kind of mix with different people like entrepreneurs, property investors who are, you know, very lateral thinking a lot of the time and kind of completely different to medics, I guess. Medics are kind of almost black and white in terms of you have to follow this process and that's it. Whereas, you know, being surrounded by property investors and entrepreneurs, there's lots of lateral thinking and being really creative and finding a solution to something. Um, so anyway, so we had to find a, um, a replace, we had to find a strategy to replace my medical income relatively quickly. So we kind of just fell into serviced accommodation initially um to replace my salary a lot quicker because the return is a lot higher compared to a normal buy to let property and at that point in time we weren't really in the financial situation to actually have a big deposit to then put into a buy to let property um i think we got one in 20 in 2017 2018 um as our first buy to let property but we weren't in the position where we could replace my medical salary from buy to lets because that would have taken a lot of buy to lets and that would have taken ages to kind of um, accrue those deposits to invest in buy to lets. So we wanted yeah. to go down the service accommodation and rent to service accommodation route because the return is a lot quicker. You can cash flow a lot quicker. 
Um, yeah, and then just, I type... thank, just Tanya, but for anybody listening in who may be brand new to property and they're thinking, what serviced accommodation, what's rent to serviced accommodation? Can you just mm -hmm. like sort of for a minute, just give a quick overview of what exactly that is just for the new people to property? Yeah, so serviced accommodation is essentially a short term let that you do with a property similar to a hotel standard. So it's a hospitality business as well as a property investing business where you provide short term accommodation to people in your area who are there for work, co corporates, contractors and the leisure and tourist market as well. So it's a it's a home from home alternative to a hotel, essentially. Um, and rent to SA, rent to service accommodation is where you use other people's properties to do the same thing to generate a relatively good income and cash flow each month um, with their permission and all above board, essentially. Re really powerful strategies to create cash from property. So I just want to make sure for anyone who's listening that didn't know what that was, they, they, they understand that. Sorry, so you can keep, keep going with the story then. Um, so then uh, I think it was uh, early 2018, around Easter, March, April time, I kind of stumbled across Progressive funnily enough, because the marketing's pretty strong. Um, and I kind of came across Progressive and I went to the um, MSOPI, MSOPI, Multiple Streams of Property Income, three day event, I think it was in Bristol. And um, I met some great people, met some amazing speakers. You were there, met you um, in 2018. Um, and yeah, people like Glenn were there and like loads of amazing people. Kevin Pineskis was there as well. Um, and I just got really inspired about getting into property. The energy was really high. Met some lifelong friends that I'm very good friends with now. You know, that was the start of me up leveling my network, which has been so instrumental to me changing my life over the last two years. Um, and decided to sign up to a few courses. I actually didn't sign up to the service accommodation one because I was already kind of doing it. I'd stumbled right. across it. So I thought, I'm doing pretty well. And the guys that have done the course are kind of at a similar level to me. So I didn't do the essay course, um, but I did the deal packaging course. I did the commercial conversion course because those were the things that I was interested in at that time. Yeah. Um, and um, I'd already I'd already got a buy to let property by that point. So I thought, OK, I could do buy to let. And my husband's a builder, so I can kind of put that together. Um, and then I did those courses and I did some of the um, I can't remember the um, I can't remember what it's called. But I did some of the a couple of times I did the same course where you you're taught about getting investment, how to get yeah. investment. I can't yeah. um, be, be your own bank, joint venture finance, raising secrets. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then you did the VIP mentorship, did you? Yeah. So from the second time that I did the raising finance um, one or two day program, I signed I decided to sign up to the VIP mentoring mastermind, whatever you want to call it, for 12 months. And I've done six months of that so far. Um, I had to stop it after six months because I went off on maternity leave and I couldn't be traveling up with a newborn baby. Um, and that has just been massive that's been really instrumental again to up level my network again in terms of my um the people i surround myself with the mentality the mindset of people of you know just having a success mindset and being surrounded by people who were just pushing themselves constantly and pushing themselves out of their comfort zones um and yeah i've had the opportunity to come and spend a day with rob up at progressive as well that was a year ago i can't believe how that's been so that's been like we've been on so lockdown quickly. a year nearly just so I know. To, tanya for that was you went to bristol in march 18 was it a march april 18 yeah so we're correct. coming up to almost three years just for anyone listening in what have you achieved in that three-year period so what sort of like deals have you done cash flow and um, what where have you got to in your business in that three-year period because uh so with my service accommodation business, um, in the first full year, so that was 2019, um, I built it up to a six figure business on one day a week. So I did that whilst working part time three days a week as a doctor with my young family, most of it whilst pregnant as well. Um, so I built it up to a six figure business with a 30 to 40 percent um, profit margin um, and the second year which was last year so basically the whole year was tainted by coronavirus but we did even better last year than we did the first year in full year in business um and so that's going really well that's cash flowing really well even in the current circumstances because we've pivoted our marketing um, and we've adapted to the current market that we can accommodate 
I, I, um, hear, I hear a lot of people, Tanya, say to me, um, I don't have time or I can't make the time and stuff. And you're saying that you created a six figure business one day a week while you were still in, the, in your job as a doctor and you were pregnant having a baby and your second year in child. business. Uh, yeah, and and you've had a baby since, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. you've do, you've second year of business was in the biggest global pandemic probably in history. So, what would you say to people who are um, who say I don't have time or I can't make the time or I can't do it? Because I think it could really help people. I think I don't want to be harsh, but at the same time, I have to be because I'm in the position where I'm a mentor now as well. So my attitude is if you want to say that, that's an excuse. As far as I'm concerned, that is an excuse because there are other people who've come from far worse off situations and circumstances with much less time than other people who've done amazingly, created success and created wealth for themselves. And they have the same amount of time in every 24 hours that anyone else has. So if they can do it, then there's no reason why um, you can't do it. It's all about desire and it's all about how much do you really want it. Now, it's hard to kind of just nurture that kind of mindset on your own so which is why it's so valid and so valuable to be in a mastermind type setting or to be in like you know the vip type program because you're constantly surrounded by people who think similarly to you or who are a few steps or a few kilometers ahead of you which helps keep you pushing forward so i don't believe in people when they say i can't do it because i haven't got the time because you can you just have to make the time and it just depends how how important how much you desire the outcome yeah i always say it people's excuses is just another reason to fail to not do something so um what what's next for for tanya so what's you've got you've obviously built a successful business in the first couple of years you've done that through ch the most challenging times you could with i've got two young kids like with a young baby plus a global pandemic um yeah so you know it's really impressive what you've done obviously a lot of people get into property and then they start off and I know you said you had already done service accommodation or some of it, so you didn't really do the training because you were already in the business or not initially. Um, mm -hmm. what, when you start, you've got that initial goal. What's the bigger plan for Tanya now? So what's next? What's the like sort of five? Where do you see yourself going over the next three to five years? Well, I left my job as a doctor a month ago. So that's pretty ma massive. Like that's a massive transformation. I still can't get my head around that. That was two days ago, a month ago, two days ago which is a bit weird. Um, so that's fully changed. So I'm my own boss, uh, which is what I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be a businesswoman. Um, we're now creating our, building our asset base. So we're now buying with the cash flow and revenue generated from the service accommodation business. We're now buying multiple properties. So we're now in conveyancing for three houses at the moment, um, two of which are going to be high-end premium serviced accommodation houses um so we're going to be doing we're combining the buy refurbish refinance model with serviced accommodation with that so we're going to be releasing as much money as we can um and then putting on the sa market um i've got a business partner so we're now in ventures with um, a different type of property strategy so we're looking at hmos now so we want to create an hmo portfolio um and I'm expanding my entrepreneur business mentor business, which I've created. So that's the second business that I created successfully last year on the back of all my experience in business in the first and second year. Um, so I'm now expanding that and I'm working with freedom focused female entrepreneurs who want to create the business that they love to live the life that they want because that's exactly what I've done and that's what I'm doing now. Um, and my family and I are supposed to be in the process of immigrating to Ibiza this year because we like life is for living right now so as we're continuing to add um cash flowing assets to our asset base and also um other people's assets in the rent to service accommodation business to our portfolio for RSA um but we're focusing this year in sort of the upcoming years um on adding properties to our owned portfolio now hmm. And are you working with joint venture partners or private investors? Or are you just doing that with your own funds? Because you mentioned earlier, obviously, the joint venture um, event that you attended. So do you do, are you looking, just, is that all just funds created from SA or is it partnerships? So the current properties that we're buying at the moment are funds from our SA business. However, the properties that I'm looking at buying at the moment, so there's one lease purchase option, lease option purchase, whatever you want to call it. 
um, which we're looking at, which will be investor funded. And the HMO portfolio that I'm I'm embarking upon with my business partner at the moment will be investor funded. Right. So what, what would you say to anyone who's thinking about getting started in property and thinking, um, obviously you've achieved an awful lot in two years and you've got big goals for the, to grow even further and you've got that freedom now and out of the job. What would you say to anyone who's sort of sitting there thinking, can I do it too? Could I could I follow the same path as Tanya? Could I could I get myself to where she's got to? The first thing that you have to do is work on your mindset. And it might be tough doing that on your own. So surround yourself with like minded people, people that are going to push you, um, which means educating yourself, whether it's a book, whether it's listening to a podcast, whether it's listening to audible, audible every day or whether it's doing a mastermind or a program like with a company like Progressive, which I would definitely recommend. Um, you need to work on your mindset first and foremost. You need to nail the goals that you want to go and achieve and then figure out which strategy it is that you want to implement. Um, but I always, always say that you have to start with the end in mind. So you have to know what's important to you and you have to know what you want to go and achieve. Then surround yourself with the right people to help you actually go and achieve that, who cheer you on. That's that's key, really, to me, um, alongside getting educated. OK, awesome. So um, I'm obviously conscious of, of your time and stuff. I really appreciate you taking some time out. I know you got a really busy schedule You're to welcome. come and join us and share your journey. Um, I, I've been watching your journey since the start for the last couple of years. Um, you add loads of value in the progressive property community. You're always in there giving value to people as well, which is so important in the community. So for me and progressive, it's a thank you to not just for, you know, for taking on the knowledge and learning, but also the value you give to other people is phenomenal. So um, thank you for me and the community and the progressive community to you and also um, for taking the time out to spend this evening with us and, and talk us through your journey. And I'm really excited about what I'm going to see you do over the coming years as well, because I think you're going to do some amazing, amazing stuff in property. So I said thank you for coming on, Tanya. And um, yeah. hopefully this you the, the audience finds this a value. I know they will because there's some really, really vital content in there for people, whether you're at the start of your property journey or whether you've already started and maybe hit a roadblock. You, you can the strategies out there that you can do if Tanya can do this in the middle of a pandemic with while having a baby and in a job like a doctor, then you can too. You absolutely can. But it's just the story you Definitely. tell yourself and giving yourself that belief and surround yourself. So um, thank you, Tanya, for spending the time online. Thank you, everybody. And I'll see you next time.